New Year, and we're glad that you're here. We've seen some of you we've got a chance to see and visit with a little bit uh, since New Year came uh, earlier this week, uh, and we had our service on Wednesday. But, uh, but also, uh, for many of you, this is our first time seeing you, so we want to definitely wish you a Happy New Year, and we want to welcome you here. And if you were here one single Sunday, that's it, okay? Now most, I think everybody in here was here, uh, here at least one time with us last year. If you were here with us at least one time last year, you heard kind of our mission for the whole year. We were going to tie in with everything that we did and it was this idea that we wanted him to increase and us to decrease. So that was our 2019. So we think it's only fitting that we have something for 2020. Last week I gave you a little hit. Uh, actually, I showed you what it was and told you about it last week, and I'm going to remind you about it today, and we're going to kind of let it be our motto as we, as we move forward in this year. And it's this right here. It's that we want to fix our eyes on Jesus. And I picked that slide because the cross is empty and Jesus ain't there no more, but his light is shining into this world. And with his light in us, we can make an impact on the world around us. And so that's what we want to do this year. That's our idea for 2020 moving forward. And being that it's, being that it's our first Sunday of 2020, this is our first of, I guess, 52, right? Is that right? I got my math right here. All right. Our first Sunday we want to we want to start your year off right. It just happens to be the isn't it weird? I'm gonna I'm gonna talk for a minute about things that are weird to me. Isn't it weird that we serve a God who operates outside of time and space, and He's sovereign and He understands it all and He knows it all? But we wait until January first to change our lives. Every year we have these New Year's resolutions when we won't realize that God's grace and His mercy is new every day. And it's okay. I'm not getting on you for that because we all do that. We all have these New Year resolutions, and we have these things we want to change. And it's kind of the way that we mark time and the way that we move forward. And so as we do that for 2020, I just want to share that little nugget with you. I think it's weird that we do that when God's like, oh, you can do it anytime. But um, a new sermon series that we're doing for this month, and maybe it's, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks, we'll see. But I want to talk about over the next several weeks, I, I, I've entitled this, this series, First Things First, and we're going to try to get this year off to a great start. We want to encourage you about what you can do in your life to, to make God first in everything uh, that we do. And I'll be talking about some things we can do long term. I'll be talking about some things we can do to kind of help us gradually grow in our relationship with Jesus. But I want to start off this first Sunday of 2020 with a message that I've called this right here, Every Day. Things we can do or how we should have our minds every day to bring God glory. And it's not a checklist, all right? It's not a resolution list because some of y'all in here, I, you don't have to raise your hands. I'll probably be able to tell from the reaction, but I bet you that some of you in here made a New Year's resolution and it's already gone down the drain, all right? That's what resolutions do. <clears throat> so we don't want to make New Year's resolutions. We want to do things. We want to equip you with things that we can do every single day. And we're going to read one of my favorite uh, chapters in Scripture in Psalm 34 about how we can just approach each day with God. And we're going to give you some supporting verses here in Matthew 6 and Matthew 16. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and, uh, and, 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 and turn to Psalm 34. And here's the thing. I want us to focus each and every day on Jesus. I don't want it to be just something that we like, because here's what we do, and Scripture warns us about this attitude, okay? Here's what we do in our humanity. We do this. That's why it's in the Bible. We all go, hey, this time next year, I hope to be doing, this time next year, I want this, or I want that, or I hope I live there, or I hope I'm dating them, or I hope my kids do this a year from now. And what the Bible actually tells us in James is this, is that we shouldn't say a year from now we'll be doing this and that. It's okay to plan. It's okay to be organized, all right? But what we ought to do is we ought to realize if it's God's will, that will happen. Our responsibility is to wake up and to live every day for the glory of God to the best of our ability and, and, and with everything that's in us, with the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us and directing us. And so I'm going to 
This sermon today is just it's a little different, not much, a little different than what we normally do in here. I do have some, for you note takers, and I see y'all out there, you make my heart, uh, I love y'all, all right? You will have a few things to write down today, but there's a couple of things I want to share with you a little bit. I'm not going to say I'm going to go off on a tangent a little bit, but I just want to share my heart with you a little bit about our world, our community, the things that we see, the things that we're told. Uh, and, and I want to just share some things, and I, I've written them down. A lot of times I will write down notes to just kind of refer to because I know what I want to say, but I wrote some things down specifically that I wanted to read from today because I, I want to make sure I don't miss something that God laid on my heart to share with you. You got me so far? So I want to give you a couple of main points and main ideas today before we get into some points that Scripture backs up today. Um, I just believe that. Um, that, that if we put God at the forefront and we follow him in obedience, that we can make a difference in this community. And I'm going to continue to share this with you because I believe it's true. All right. And we can help change lives forever. And we never know when God might show up. We've got to be faithful. We've got to do what he's laid in our hearts to do by the power of the Holy Spirit to trust him. We never know when he might change up and change, uh, show up and change lives forever. And so I want to give you two points before I even get into Scripture, kind of main ideas about this year, about 2020, about each and every day, and about what God wants to do. And I believe this with all of my heart. And you can write this one down too if you want to. But the first kind of main idea is this, is I think we as a church and you as an individual, you're right where you need to be. You are right where God wants you. We are where God wants us as a church. We followed him in obedience, all right? At this moment in time, we're right where we need to be in order for God to push us, to shape us, and to mold us into something that this community's never seen. And I don't believe, and, and, and listen, I might be wrong on this, but I don't think that it's ever happened in this community that there's ever been a church that has just fully and totally sold themselves out for the glory of God, each and every person, all right, for the glory of God, this this size with this many resources and this as generous as y'all are. I'm giving y'all props, all right, because you you allow us to do so many things that really should be just crazy for us to even consider doing, and we're excited about that. All right, so I think that we're right where we need to be to make a huge impact in this community and beyond in 2020 for the glory of God. And that leads into my second point, which I'm really going to kind of get excited about. <clears throat> I think that's just truth. We're right where we need to be. We trust God. We're right where we need to be individually and as a church. And that leads to this second point right here, and it's this right here. And our world needs Jesus like never before. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Look, I don't get it. I spend a lot of my days trying to I mean, I, I pastor and take care of the church, obviously, but also reading God's Word. And I don't, it's not like I'm under a rock and I don't pay attention to what's going on in the world. I mean, I, I, I do, I try to. We don't get to watch a whole lot of news at our house because cartoons are on more than that. But we get a chance, we're like, hey, can we ask, girls, we're watching the news. We're going to see what's going on in the world today. And I'll tell you, there's been a couple, there are a couple of things going on right now in our world that are, you know, huge they're game changers there's a lot of things going on with our own country and, and country in the middle east and some things going on in iran, uh, iran and here in the united states and there's some things we definitely need to be praying about and uh there's that there's the fact that i this just came to light we need to be praying if you want something to pray about today or pray about this week pray for the entire continent of australia because the best i can see the whole place is on fire it's crazy down there i didn't i had no idea so I want anybody, if you're out in Facebook land right now, maybe you're watching down under, all right? Good day, and we're praying for you because it's bad down there right now, all right? It's really bad. And so there's a lot of things going on, and this world needs Jesus and the hope that's found only in him. And I, I, I think that all of us can look at what's going on in our country, in the United States, and I, listen, I'm not doom and gloom. Y'all know me, you know me, all right? I am probably like... I'm not going to say I'm annoyingly optimistic, but maybe close. Close. All right. I'm very positive. I have a, I, I, I just, I am. I just, I have a lot of faith. I have a lot of trust in God and all these things. And that's not to build me up. It's just, 
I'm, I'm not doom and gloom, but I want to say this, that I, I think that our country has never been further from the will of God than we are right now as far as what I'm seeing in our society today. It's not just in our society. A lot of times it's in our churches. All right? And I, I think that we live in a world where our moral compass as a nation has never been more out of whack. I'm not doom and gloom. I'm just trying to be factual and give you what I see. We live in a very, and I, I, I use this term today, and I'm going to describe it in just a minute. We live in a very unethical age. That may be a strange description for some of you when I talk about this world that we live in, but unethical, when I use that, I mean it in the most literal sense of the word. word. It, it, it literally means without ethics. And when you look at what the word ethics mean, a, a very simple definition of ethics is this, the way things ought to be. If something is ethical, that's the way it ought to be. We live in an unethical world where things aren't the way they ought to be. It's fallen. It's broken. It desperately needs Jesus. All right? There is an increasing lack of ethics in our country because we are increasingly pushed by political and social agendas that tell us over and over and over again, hey, you've heard it. I've heard it. Some of y'all have been persuaded. Some of y'all may even kind of find yourself feeling this way, and I get it because you have loved ones or you have other people that kind of live different lifestyles and do different things, but we live in a world where we are continually pushed and told there is no absolute truth. It's what we're told. There's no absolute truth. In fact, and we have some young people in here that are in college right now, and I don't know that they're like necessarily teaching you this in college, but this is a cardinal rule in higher education right now that they're basically telling our future generations there is no black and white when it comes to moral behavior, only areas of gray. And that leads to a culture when you like when we when we teach young people and we live out these ideas that there's no right or wrong, there's areas of gray and all this, it leads to a culture that is permeated by this idea that sociologists call something. Man, I tell you what, look at I'm getting all fancy up here. Here's the term, though. It's a, it's a tongue twister. And I'll say it's a tongue twister. It's kind of a mouthful, though. You ready? This idea that there's no black and white, that there's no right and wrong, that it's like what's right for you might be right for, uh, you know, might not be right for this person. What's right for this person may not be right for this person. This is, it's called moral relativism. It means there's no right and wrong. It means that everything's relative. What might be right for one person, it might be wrong for another. And we live in an age where a variety of behaviors and, and lifestyles and all of these different ideas are not only accepted, but they're encouraged and where morals and ethics that we should live by according to an almighty God are continually ignored. They're ignored. They're called outdated. And this world continues to go down this spiral while people go, oh, but you can't live according to the word. Let's live according to what we think is right. And the world continues to go down a bad place. And I understand that that might make us angry. And righteous anger is okay. The anger shouldn't cause us to sin. We shouldn't lash out in anger what we've got to do. The challenge for us as Christians is this. We don't lash out in anger. We need to lash out in love. Oh, that's hard, though, Jesus. I need you for that. And one of the worst things and one of the things I think that maybe upsets me a little bit is some, is some Christians just sit by and they're letting it happen. Because it's not like we live in a country where our freedom of religion is limited. We live in the greatest country in the world, not only from the standpoint of like how we live our lives, our standard of living, but that we have the greatest platform for change available to us to make a difference because of our freedom of religion. We have more opportunities and ability to change the world, excuse me, to change the world around us. But the problem is this, we care too much about what the world thinks. We don't care enough about what God's word says. We care too much about what they say about what we ought to do. We'd rather take the road that's traveled by most other people, which leads to comfort, conformity, and silence. 
And the reason why is because we don't want to offend people. We don't want to mess with the status quo. And the church and us as individuals are sucked into that world, and very slowly we start to rely on things other than God. The first thing is that, hey, we rely on the government. We rely on schools. We rely on, hey, how many teachers? We got any teachers in here? We got a lot to go to this church. Anybody teach around? Oh, yeah, listen. Y'all better solve all the world's problems. You better raise those kids because, by God, parents ain't doing it these days. Right? Any teachers up here know that. Just rely on the government to give you everything you need. God forbid we start to listen to and depend on mass media and this culture of media to shape the lives of our children and the morals of our faith instead of God's Word. That's what's happening. Y'all sitting there looking at me like, he's, done a lot. he's gone off his rocker and he's crazy. I, listen, I'm just telling you something. I'm seeing it happen. It's happening. I was just told this morning, I won't go into detail about it, but there's one of the largest denominations in our country right now is about to split right down the middle for this very reason. Because you know why? Because half of them are like, eh, we got to change. We got to change. The world tells us it's not nice to think that way or we shouldn't do that. And this is God's, this is God's love letter, y'all. This, this, is, this is the perfect truth, and we got to embrace it because he knows what's best for us. There are some things we, some, some things in our life we're just simply not supposed to do. We're supposed to just trust God and be obedient to what he tells us because it's best for us. So I, I, this isn't doom and gloom, though. This, this is a mess. Believe it or not, this is a message of encouragement today. This is a message of encouragement today. It reminds me of the conversation that I had with my brother last Sunday. We were all hanging out. And it, here's the thing. Like, we tend to, as uh, I, I got something for everybody, young and old and everywhere in between. You ready? We get a little older, and you know what happens to us? We see these things I've mentioned. We see these things that I've mentioned. And as we get older, we get bitter. And we get angry. And we lash out. And we become the angry old man. He's in, uh, hey, he's, uh, we, see, uh, we see him all the time, right? Or the angry old woman. That they just don't want nothing to do with nobody. Leave me at home. Don't bother me. I'm not even going to go to church anymore. I'm just going to sit around, and I'm going to be miserable because this world's going to hell in a handbasket, and I've been around too long. Too many things are changing, and I just don't want no part of it. And I'm going to be angry. And I want to tell you something. If that's you, hey, I get it. I get it. There are things I see now that when I was a child, I, you know, I, I, don't, I, I see these things now, and I didn't as a child. Righteous anger is okay, but let me tell you something, all right? If, if, that's, if that's your way, if you're moving down that road, you need to find your purpose and your identity in Christ because he wants to move you out of that because the, he, your light needs to shine for this world, all right? So this is, a, this is a message of encouragement today. I didn't even talk about that. I, I want to encourage you, all right? We have the opportunity to get it right because we know the truth, and we want this to change. Like, wouldn't it be great if in, a, if in my lifetime, if in my lifetime, I was able to sit up here and preach, preach a message to y'all go, hey, do y'all remember when it started to change? When all the things, like, because, like, I feel like for the last several years, I could probably stand up here and say this, like, world's getting bad, right? World's getting bad. Things are turning bad. Things are going wrong. Things are going wrong. And it would be like an amen session for the past several years. Wouldn't it be great if we changed it? Like, don't you want that for your kids? Don't you want that for your grandchildren and for all these generations? We want God to bless their lives because of our faithfulness and our trust in him and to change things. And so I've got a really simple message about things we can do every day to make this happen. All right, and it starts with us. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I preached a message, and my encouragement to you is this, is that God, yes, God wants his love can change the whole world. All right, and we saw John 3, 16. His love is for the whole world. But his love also is for your world and the people that come across your path and the difference that you can make and how we never know what, how big that difference might be. So here's what we, I, I want to read this scripture, and I got four little quick points I want to share with you today because, you know, I don't know. Ain't nobody at church today. They're all at home because they're using snow as an excuse. So y'all can have your rain at the restaurants today, all right? Stick around in town. Everybody else is sitting at home under the covers right now because they thought it was going to be snowing too bad. So I, got, I want to read this scripture and give you four main points very quickly 
This is what the Bible says in Psalm 34. I will praise the Lord at all times, good, bad, or otherwise. That's my, I added that part. All times means all times. I will constantly speak his praises. See, he hadn't changed. This world, things go wrong, but I'll, I will speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together, refuge. Let's do that in this community, all right? Verse 4, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. Here's my part I'm adding in. Although we live in desperate times, and although things seem like they're going way downhill, in my desperation I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles, for the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you, his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Four points real quickly about how we can make first, how we can make first things first and put God at the center of our lives every day. These aren't resolutions. This is a lifestyle change. These are things that we can do each day. And hey, if you wake up one day and you go, I didn't do this yesterday, it doesn't mean that you can't find forgiveness and grace and mercy and keep moving forward, okay? These are things that we can do each and every day to put God first in our lives and to get our mind in the right place. Number one is this. Praise Him. Praise Him. What is, I praise Him at all times. I will praise Him at all times times because if we don't praise him then we begin to buy into the lies of this world well maybe god isn't worthy of our praise maybe his ways aren't worthy maybe he's got some things wrong in this book you know it was written a couple thousand years ago world's changed i think god needs to change his mind i've actually heard people say that If we, start to, if we don't praise him, then we start to believe in those lies that evil might prevail, that our actions are futile, and, and that we can't make a difference for his glory. And, and, and look, sometimes, you know, I, I, I've thought about this. Like, sometimes I, I just believe, and even we as a church at Refuge, there are some things I, I, I want to see us do just slightly different, Not, nothing major. We've, we've created a culture here of loving God and loving people, and we're going to keep doing that, and that's not going to change. But God put something on my heart this week about praising him, about praising him. And, 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 and look, hear my heart, man, it's going to sound like I'm coming down hard on churches or ideas or traditions or whatever, and I, I'm not. I promise you I'm not. But this is what God put on my heart this week, is that we typically, as Christians, we have, hear my heart, we spend so much time building up our knowledge instead of putting knowledge into action, all right, that we, for, that we, that we just, we, this idea of praising him gets lost, all right? We need, to, we need to put more of our knowledge into action and praise him and live it out. Some, some churches, let me tell you what the expectation is, okay? At some churches, God bless them, the expectation is three sermons per week. Three completely different and totally totally different sermons per week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, totally different. Wednesday night, totally different. That's 156 sermons per week. That's 300 out of there's 365 days in the. I think I got that right. 52 times three, 52 weeks in a year. Three. No, I did. I, whatever you know what I mean. When I get nonsensical, don't listen. 52 sermons. <laughs> Wait a minute, 52 weeks, three sermons a week, 156 a year, 365 days a year. That means that you come in, listen to a sermon, and basically you only need like two or three days to really live that out and like you're ready for something new. And what I believe is this. I believe if you come in here on a Sunday morning and you get God's word, all right, and you can look past your pastor's craziness, and you get God's word and what he's saying to you, there should be enough meat there to chew on all week long. And living that out. You got what I'm saying? 
Instead, but see, what, what too, too often what churches have wanted to do and what I've been a part of too in my past is, hey, let's just preach, 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 preach and give knowledge, 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 knowledge. But 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 says this, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. See, we can get so much knowledge, all we're worried about doing is making ourselves smarter and we feel better about ourselves and we look at the rest of the world and go, why aren't y'all like us? What's wrong with you? Don't you know what the Bible says in Haggai chapter 3, verse 2? I'm like, no, I never even heard of that book. What do you, in the Bible? I would say, like, we need to love. We need to put it in action. Listen, we're learning a lot, but all this idea, look, and, and here, yes, yes, we do two a week, all right? Again, I'm not trying to tear down churches and ideas. I'm just saying that we made it a point a couple of years ago that when we did our Wednesday night sermons, they were going to be linked to our Sunday message so we could take what we've learned on Sunday and go, go a little deeper and learn to put that in action instead of giving you something totally new. Make sense? Y'all got it? We don't praise them enough. We just don't praise them enough. So what happened was this. See, even in... I, I, confession, I confessed on Wednesday. I'll, I'll do it again right now. All right? Even in sometimes what we perceive to be our laziness or our, I don't know, unwillingness, and I'm speaking as your pastor, when, I'm like Wednesday, January 1st, 2020. Who wants to be at church? I don't want to preach. We'll just do a praise service. We'll do a praise service, and we'll pray, and we'll worship. and We'll believe that God, God will show up. My idea really was this, though. It's the holidays. I don't want to prepare a sermon. I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. You know what happens? We get in here on Wednesday, and we simply worshiped, and we praised, and we prayed to our God, and he showed up, y'all, in a big way. And if you were here on Wednesday, you know it because you were here. Young lady got saved. All right, January 1st, 2020, God's like, hey, Look, it only took you all year to realize this, Shane. It ain't about you. It's about me. You get out of the way and let me increase, and I'll handle. You praise me, and I will change lives. And that's why this year we're going to be praising him more than anything. One of the small changes we're going to make is at least once a month we're going to have a service just like what we had this past Wednesday. And it ain't because I don't like to preach. It's because we saw what, how God moved in that. We want to praise him. We're going to simply praise him. We're going to have a prayer request. And there's something else, too. There's something very powerful about what happened on Wednesday night when we actually share in our lives together. Too often, I think we've come into here as a church, and we just, and I, listen, I get it, y'all. Y'all like, are like, hey, we come to listen to you, not so we got to talk about what's going on in our lives. Because the worst, like some of y'all's worst fear would be like, hey, get up here. Y'all take my place. I'm out. Some of y'all be like, I'm not getting up there and talking. And so when you take prayer requests, a lot of times you can hear crickets in the room. Like, hey, does anybody want to talk? Like, any prayer requests? Anybody want to do it? And usually it's very quiet, and nobody wants, everybody else, everybody's going, as soon as somebody else talks, I will. That's what everybody says. I'm not going to be the first to talk. And so what I did on Wednesday night was this. I go, let me share with you a couple of prayer requests that I have. Maybe you can think about some things and get the ball rolling a little bit. And sure enough, it took one person. I don't even remember how it started. One person started sharing, and before you knew it, we're going around the room, and hands are coming up, and people are willing to speak and share in their brokenness and their prayer requests and their victories and all of these things. And before you know it, I'm like, oh, I'll get to you in a minute. I saw a hand up over here. I saw a hand up over here. And it, it starts rolling, and God's presence is there, and we begin to pray for one another, and we just let it out, and we praise him, and we worship him through all of that. And it was an amazing thing to be here. And we're going to keep doing that. <sighs> Take a deep breath. I, got, I get excited about all that God is doing. So we're going to praise him, and secondly, every day, every day, we're going to do this. Number two, we're going to, not going to just praise him. We're going to seek him. We're going to seek his will and his way. We're not just going to say God is good and then go do things our way. We're going to say God is good. His ways are better. God, we praise you for all that you've done, your creation, me, this life, this very gift that we have of life. I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to seek your ways because they're so much better than mine on my own. And here's a challenge for you. It's a challenge for me, too. Instead of in 2020 going, you know what? 
this year I want this to happen, or this year I want that to happen. Let me give you an example. Instead of saying, well, this year I want, I, I'm going to get in shape and take care of myself. I, this year I'm going to eat better. This year I want better health. This year I'm going to take care of my finances. I want more wealth. This year I want better behaved kids. This year I want a better behaved spouse. This year I want a better career. This year I want any career. This year I want this. Whatever. Fill in the blank with whatever it is. Whatever you're seeking this year. And instead, do what God has told us to do in his word. From the words of Jesus. Instead, do this. Pull it up there, Cheryl. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things that I just mentioned will be added to you according to his will, his purpose, and his timing. And because we've praised him and because we've sought him, all right, again, all these things have to be linked together because if you get up and praise God every day, but you go do things your own way, that, that's, you're not drawing any closer to him. If you praise him and you seek him and then he reveals himself to you and you go, nah, don't know about that. God, that sounds crazy. You want me to talk to my coworker about Jesus? You talk about this person about Jesus? You want me to do this? We have to praise him. We have to seek him. And then number three is this. Pull that up, Cheryl. We got to trust him. We got to trust him. Trust what he's saying to you. Because here's what I've learned about myself and about many of you is that we, we take our eyes off Jesus so much because we're afraid of missing out on other things. We take our eyes off Jesus and we don't trust him and what he's told us to do because we have this fear of missing out. In fact, the young people in here know it's like a little FOMO. F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. So I'm not going to do what I'm not going to do what God has laid them on. I'm going to trust Him because I'm afraid I might miss out on all the fun and all the things that are going on. We're afraid of missing out on the things we perceive that we want instead of appreciating and growing in the things that He gives us. We look at things other people have and go, Oh my God, I just I want what the, I want that. I just want that. I just want this. I just want that appreciate and grow in what God has given you. Trust him. Trust him that he's got, he has got you where he wants you right here and right now, all right? And, and, and listen, and that he's equipped you to do everything he wants you to do for his glory. I, about six months ago, I won't tell you this, all right, listen. Facebook ain't the devil, all right? Facebook ain't the devil. A lot of people on there might be, but it ain't, all right? It's a tool. It's a tool to help you. Uh, it can be used for good or bad. And there are things I see on Facebook every once in a while, and I'm like, I'm saving that. Someone posts a good picture or a meme or whatever they're like, and I, I, I save it. I saved this about six months ago, and I'm like, I'm waiting for the right time because it's good, all right? And let, let, before I tell you, she's excited. She's ready to hear it. All right. Yeah. All right. This is not in the Bible. I, you need to know this. I, I, I always want to make sure that you are clear. Okay. This is not in the Bible. This is not what the Bible says that heaven will be like. All right. This is, this is a book written by a Christian author that I think gives us some good perspective on something to think about. Do you follow me? Please don't walk out of here and go, Preacher said this was in the Bible today. No, I'm not telling you that, all right? This was a picture someone took of a book they were reading, of a part of the book, and I thought it was really good, very thought-provoking, and I was like, I want to share this with our church sometime. That's why you'll notice some underlining and a little side writing on the, whatever it's called, the side, margins. All right, I'm going to read it, because you won't be able to see it when I pull it up here, because it's a small print. But I want you to think about this. Do you think about this and about how God has you right where he wants you, and you need to trust him to do what he's put in your heart. I'll read it to you. Pull that up there, Cheryl. Imagine getting to heaven and God saying this to you. This is God saying this to you. 
Before I laid the foundations of the earth, I thought of you and of the days you would live on earth. I planned out the people and the places that I would give you. I laid out your neighbors and your workplace, the places you would attend school and your family. I laid out enough days to do all the good works that I purposed for you, and I equipped you with all you would need to accomplish these purposes here. I filled you with my spirit to encourage you and remind you and lead you. I gave you my word so you would know me and know what to do. I gave you people to run with and people who needed me. Let's talk about how all that went. Oh, oh, oh mm, I thought that was going somewhere else. Trust God. Trust him. I'm telling y'all, listen, y'all, he brings people across our paths every day that need to know him, that we can share about what he's done in our lives. All right, he has got this. We can trust him, all right? I mean, every day. Not just January 1, 2020, where we turn the calendar and we start a new year. Not just January 5th, where it's the first Sunday of the year. I'm talking about March 15th or September 15th or the middle of the year where we're doing that. We can trust him every stinking day. And we can do it for his glory. And listen, we have got to praise him. We've got to seek him. And we've got to trust him. And here's the last thing right here. Once all that's in place, then we can move. Then we can move and do things for his glory. That's just, that's the, we can do that every day. He, listen, I'm telling you, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, we will move and we'll do things every day to praise God, seek him, and trust him. We'll do it every day. This is what the Bible says in Matthew 16, 24. The Bible says this right here. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and sit in church 52 times a year and do nothing else. Oh, no, it said you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and sit in your homes and never go out because this world is going to hell in a handbasket. Take up your cross and follow me. You know what that tells me about Jesus? He ain't sitting still. His desire is for you to follow him into this world to make a difference for his glory and to change lives. And I'm telling y'all, when you start to plant those seeds and when you see him working in people's lives, when you're talking to somebody about what God's done in your life, when God puts it on your heart to share that with somebody. I said this a few weeks ago. When you start... When you have a conversation with somebody about God or when you're talking to somebody about what God's doing in your life, you're only getting in on a conversation he's already started in their heart. He's speaking to them too. You're just being obedient. Trust him and move. It's not about us. It's all about him. If our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we will take up our cross. We'll die to ourselves. We'll get moving. We'll follow him, and we'll do it for his glory. And, y'all, he'll do more. And this is, this is not on the screen. It's not in my notes, but it's the Holy Spirit is just speaking to me right now because it's in Scripture. It's in God's Word. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 tells us that he is able to do far more abundantly than what we can think or imagine if we'll trust him and if we'll follow him. And, you know, this past Wednesday, as we praised him and as we worshiped, we had a young lady in here right now that surrendered her life. And I don't know, listen, some of you today – I'm hoping that you stand in a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You might not. There's no better time than, to, than right now to surrender your life to Jesus and begin this. Maybe today, listen, maybe you want to come in a few minutes and you need to come pray about, hey, this is what I want to see take place. And, and you know, this is what I want to do. God, help me, help me learn how to praise you each day through my circumstances, through the dark days and the great days. Praise him because he's good. His character never changes. Some of you need to learn how to do that. You need to learn how to seek his ways, and you've got to trust him when he lays things on your heart. All I'm going to ask over these next few minutes is we sing this song about leading us to the cross of Jesus. All I'm asking over these next few minutes is we'll be obedient. Maybe we need to come and pray. Maybe we need to bring somebody with us. Maybe we need to step into that relationship with Jesus right now. Maybe that's your next move is to step into a relationship with Jesus. I don't know. I'm just encouraging you and letting you know 
This is a place of freedom where you can do that, and it will be encouraged, and we will love on you, and we'll celebrate with you. Amen. Deep breath.